Tennis stars from the Golden State are bringing some heat to Australia. California's Jensen Brooksby upset the number two seed, Casper Rudd of Norway, in the second round Thursday. Another star from the state, Mackenzie McDonald, upset Rafael Nadal earlier. Nadal was the defending champion and number one seed. California was shining on the women's side, too, where Katie Volinets stunned number nine seeded Veronica Kudermetova. She became first, the first American qualifier to reach the Australian Open women's singles third round in 30 years. Steph Bumgardel joins me now from Melbourne. She is a reporter for our Australia's Network 10. Steph, let me ask you, before we get to the American players, which of course we're obsessed with, can I ask you about Britain's Andy Murray? He played the longest match of his career, five hours and 45 minutes, and he ended at 4 a.m. your time. Tell us about that match. Yeah, John, it's the story of the day here in Australia. Tanasi Kokonakis taking on Andy Murray in a very late night match here in Melbourne. It was all due to start about 8 p.m. local time, which didn't end up starting until about 11 o'clock at night. And then five hours and 45 minutes later, Andy Murray prevailed, coming from behind to take out the win about this morning, making it the second latest finish to a game in Australian Open history. This has, of course, intensified scheduling discussions uh, with a push to uh, have just one late night match per day and as well uh, potentially introduce a cutoff time to matches. Andy Murray himself added to the debate, saying a late night game is disrespectful to the players, to the referees, to the fans, and to the ball kids who, of course, had to work into the early hours of this morning but despite all of that everybody hung on to that match right because i mean murray was he's down two sets about to basically lose the third got almost as close as you could get before he turned it around uh, did everybody stick around and what was it a pretty mad scene as that went on Fans did stick around, understandably. I'm sure some of them had to go home, like myself. Having worked today, I couldn't stick around to a 4 a.m. finish. It was a very exciting game, though. Many Australian fans in the crowd there cheering for Tanasi Kokonakis. So a little bit of an upset for Australians uh, today. Of course, Andy Murray doesn't have much time to, pre to prepare either. He does have to play again tomorrow. And both of the top-seeded players on the men's side were knocked out after the first round. That hasn't happened since the Australian Open 21 years ago. Uh, are those a surprise upsets uh, just a surprise, or is it a f something about the game uh, and, and these American players? I think the Aussie Open has proven that absolutely anything can happen. Eleven top seeds have been knocked out yesterday, uh, two of them by Americans, as you mentioned. Uh, it's been a great start to the year for American tennis players. There were two of the top seeds in the men's and one uh, top ten seed in the women's that were knocked out. So the surprises really all started on Wednesday when American Mackenzie McDonald knocked out the reigning champion of the Aussie Open and the top seed Rafael Nadal. And then Yesterday, we saw Jensen Brooksby eliminate second seed Casper Rood. There are now eight men remaining in the Australian Open. Now, the last time that many made it through to the third round was back in 1996, so 27 years ago. Quite the impressive effort by the American men. And, Steph, quickly, the, the, whether it's been the weather or fires or COVID-19, the Australian has been... Uh, beset with issues over the years, but it's very hot there because it's summer. How, how has the heat affected the tournament so far? Well, it wouldn't be an Aussie Open without a couple of scorching summer days. We did see heat disruptions on day two. Temperatures were sitting about 40 degrees Celsius, which I do believe is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So they did have to suspend matches throughout the day there. And of course, being in Melbourne, we do tend to see four seasons in a day here. So we did see rain disruptions that night as well and continuing into day three. The good news for organisers, though, is the weather headache does seem to be over. It's pretty mild today and that looks to be continuing throughout the rest of the week. So we are unlikely to see any further heat disruptions. Steph Bumgardel in Melbourne, Australia. May cool times be ahead for you. Thank you.